you seen Tara's confidence grow over this offseason, and what do you see her role kind of looking like this year? Well, uh, Sarah has been phenomenal. Um, she's in the best shape she's ever been in her life um, from a fitness standpoint, from a strength standpoint. Um, got a knock on wood. She's been shooting the ball very, very well for us inside of practice right now. You know, I think her goal for the season is to not lose her confidence. Um, and sometimes that's the the one thing that happens with uh, shooters, right, is uh, they miss a few. And um, I think that happened to her a year ago where she started, um, you know, her confidence was was shaken a little bit. And uh, we can't let allow that to happen. So, um, you know, as, as uh, our staff and our coaches and even her teammates realize that um, we, we need her. Um, and we need her to uh, play freely, but also play with a tr tremendous amount of confidence. Um, but she's looked great. She's looked great in, in practice. And um, I anticipated her having a great year for us um, for a lot of different reasons. But um, she sure has been shooting the ball well. Skip. Good morning, Coach. Good to see you. Good morning. Um, yeah. <laughs> Two quick things. One, can you confirm a starting lineup for us? And then two, um, can you talk, give us a little something about your experience with the national team over the summer? Um, you know what? We haven't even talked about a starting lineup, but, um, um, and so I guess that'll be a game time decision tomorrow. But um, now I think we can all, uh, not assume, we never want to assume, but um, you know, we feel really good about those kids that returned. You know, we only lost Grace Berger. And um, a year ago, we had the dilemma or the conundrum of trying to figure out who we were going to bring off the bench between Sid Parrish and Sarah Scalia. So I think, um, you know, Skip, the, the answer for that is pretty easy, you know, with uh, everybody that we have returning. And so it just makes sense to really rely on those experienced kids. Um, the experience, again, with USA Basketball is one that I cherish, and um, uh, it was a lot different than it was a year ago when we were with the uh, 18s uh, competition, being in Spain, playing Spain in the final game, uh, Ten, probably over 10,000 uh, um, passionate uh, uh, Spanish fa uh, fans, uh, Spaniards, I should say, in the building, and so uh, not a lot of people in there for the United States, but um, now, Cody McMahon, we put her in a in an isolation on the wing, and uh, you know she made the the game winning play to put us up, and then we just needed to get the stop to win it. So, another really uh, great great experience uh, with uh, you know USA basketball, which I'm very grateful and thankful that um, you know they they thank enough of me to ask me to keep coming back, and so um, really cool experience um, around some of the best uh, players in the country in in uh, the United States. So. Very, very cool experience. And I think, again, you know, it, it offers me an opportunity to, to scout and watch some of those international teams. Uh, so I feel like I improved also as a coach uh, having, having to do that in our preparation. We'll go Seth and then Alex. Terry, I have two things for you. One, I guess kind of quickly, is everyone healthy going into, going into the first exhibition and just the start mm -hmm. of the season health-wise, where are you guys at? And then I wanted to ask you about Allie. Uh, obviously, like when she kind of wrapped up her playing career here, you and a lot of people were kind of saying, oh, she'd make a great coach one day. And it'd be cool to kind of see her back on staff here at some point. Did you ever think it would be this quickly? Uh, your first question is we are healthy. Uh, knock on wood for that also um, in a really good space uh, mentally, I think physically. Um, Kevin has once again got these guys in the, the right um, framework or, uh, you know, uh, from a mentally from a mental standpoint. Um, and then, of course, you know, Allie is a natural. We knew it when we coached her. Um, and um, it has not surprised me one bit how she has really um, embraced her role here on staff. And she's she's dove right in. Um, just like she did as a as a uh, a player, you know, comes in every morning early, gets her workout in, and then dives into film. Um, and so she's been a great resource for uh, Lexi Bargaster, Chloe. Um, you know, she works with Bo, Lene Beaumont, um, and all of them. But uh, those are the the three or four that she really uh, works with. You know, our point guards. And so she's she's been tremendous. And um, 
you know, she has a very bright future in this profession, but uh, now two things about Allie, she loves this game and she loves Indiana. So two really, really great things we have going for us. Alex. Perry, thank you for the time. We appreciate it. Uh, I'm curious what you can share just about the preseason, um, what, from what you've seen this preseason um, from Monday and, and Juliana as freshman coming in. Obviously, you know, you you got a pretty set rotation, but as as the season moves along, I assume you want to develop depth so you don't wear down as the season goes along. Do you feel like those are two players that can help this season? And what have you seen from them so far? No question. Uh, both are very, very uh, talented players, play with a lot of moxie, play with a lot of confidence as, as freshmen. Um, you know, I think one of the things I love about them, or a couple of things I love about them is they're so coachable. Uh, the other thing they have going for them is they're pleasers. They want to get everything right, which I appreciate. Um, they're also very bright, so they pick up on things um quickly which is which is good from a coaching standpoint um I think there has been a learning curve for them though I think the the pace that we play the pace that we practice um is the defensive side of the ball which is always the biggest adjustment they have to make and it's usually not on the ball as much as it's away from the ball rotations um drops and so forth and so um they have been so good uh and uh they are in here uh, you know, uh, just like, um, you know, the other, the upper vet, the, the upperclassmen, the vets, you know, in here every day outside of practice times, whether they're watching film with their position coach or whether they're down there just getting shots up and working on their game. And, um, you know, I love it because it's, um, you know, it's a cultural thing for us because sooner or later those vet veterans are going to leave and we still have to have, you know, the guys that get in the gym every day and do the work. And so, uh, they have jumped in with two feet. There's, there's no, no question about that. So looking forward to watching them and watching them grow. You know, I always have the best seat because I see the growth every day in practice. And then, you know, once they get out to the, the, the floor, um, I anticipate some butterflies though on Wednesday, I'm not going to lie. Uh, we had a close scrimmage and they both looked a little nervous uh, out there. And so, um, and that was without any fans. So I think it'll be really good on Wednesday for them to, sort of get their feet wet and, uh, you know, see what it's like having bodies in the building uh, that they can look forward to playing in front of. And so uh, I think Wednesday is going to be a, a great, a great moment for, for Bo and, um, and Jules uh, and Charnese. We'll go to Ari and then Z. Good, good morning, coach. I just, I hope you're doing well and good luck with the season. I don't want you to speak too much for Yarden, but can you talk about if you've noticed any change in her game or mental state, given the situation of Israel from what I've heard there, there have been some anti-Semitic and anti-Israel rhetoric on campus. I don't you want to want you to speak too much to that part of it. I just want you to yeah. talk about notice any change in practice or on the court yeah. in her mental state. She, she, Yarden has handled herself like the pro that she is. Um, you know, I think this has been a, a practice uh, has been a, a kind of a um, a place for her to kind of get away uh, and uh, kind of shut off her concerns right now. Not that it's ever leaves her, but I think it, it does give her something else she can focus on right now. Um, her parents are doing well. We, we are in constant communication with them um, and uh, they're we're checking on them. They're checking on her. And so I think Yarden feels very, very supported here by everybody. Uh, you know, inside of our program, but also out, uh, outside. Um, she has been great. You know, I think that we can, you know, a year ago, um, I said that, uh, you know, she's so fun to coach because you can play her at so many different spots. She's so versatile. Um, and uh, she really worked on her game this summer, playing with her back to the basket a little bit more, um, you know, playing with, uh, you know, we've, we've surrounded her with uh, our, our scout guys that have been more physical with her, uh, with her back to the basket. Um, she's, she's very confident uh, in her game. And I think that, uh, you know, we're going to be able to use her a year ago, maybe not so much with her back to the basket, just because of the physicality piece. She kind of reverted back to her international roots, which was the little fade away, which is still part of her package. But, uh, you know, she, she's, uh, she's been way more physical uh, in practice and it's uh it's a good thing. I, I feel like, you know, when I, I hadn't seen her in a couple months and I got to see her and when she uh, uh, 
uh, came over to Greece with us. She looked like she had gotten taller, but I think what she'd done is I, her, her shoulders have filled out quite a bit. So I think you guys will see a big change or I think there'll be a little bit of a change. Either she grew or, but I think it's her shoulders. She worked really hard in the weight room while she was away from us with uh, her trainer and, and Kevin. Uh, they were in correspondence uh, in, the, in the couple months that she wasn't here. So she looks great, looks great. And she's doing, she's doing well. Zeke. Hi coach. I hope all is going well. I just wanted to ask about what the motivation and what the intensity and competitiveness has been like in practice through this off season. And if that is going to play a big part in the rest of this season. Yeah. Well, we, we have two things going for us. Um, Zeke one, we have competitive kids. Uh, so naturally, you know, playing against each other, um, they're competitive, but then we have a great practice squad uh, and a bunch of guys that have volunteered to come in and, and play against us every day. And so uh, there's a lot of, um, a lot of excitement in the gym. So it, it's, they're, they have, they're a great group. They, they have a tremendous amount of energy. They love to compete against our kids, but they also understand why they're there to help us. And so uh, they're, all of them are great friends, great camaraderie. Um, and so the competition and practice has been great. You know, we've, we've played, we've brought in officials a couple times, um, or we've, we've just played our guy squad. And, um, and so it's been really good for us, but, um, I've always wanted to, uh, make sure that when we build our team that we're building, uh, you know, we're, our pieces that come in are going to be competitive against one another. Um, we realize that's the only way it's going to work. You know, if we can go against each other, make each other better, our team ultimately becomes a better team. And so, um, yeah, this is a competitive, as competitive of, of a group that I've ever had um, in terms of their desire to get better and, and push each other to get better. Talia and then Seth. So I talked to Mac a little bit about the main game, and she said that she got really emotional when she heard about it. I was just wondering what your conversation with her was like when you told her she'd get to play in her home state. You know, tell you, I think I was gone uh, when we we released that. Um, so there was really no conversation that Mackenzie and I had other than, you know, one of the things we tried to do our best. We'd always don't pull it off. But um, um, in the recruiting process, when we're recruiting kids that are not from, you know, close to here, um, like Mac, um, we try to we, we tell them that we will do our best to try to get them back as close as we can to their home state um where their friends and family can come watch them um we tried to do that a year ago with Winnipeg when we went out there and played them and they she had I think three bus loads of people that came over uh and watched her but uh you know our our desire was to get her a little bit closer and that had a lot to do with Liz Honiger who oversees our um uh our schedule and um and so Liz and I went back and forth and um uh, you know, she, she, uh, as far as working on the date and, and how it played in, in our preseason, um, you know, conference, uh, slate. And so, um, yeah, I think her whole family, mom, dad, uh, Joan, stepmom, all of them are, you know, over the moon in terms of, you know, uh, us bringing her back. I just got a text from Lenny the other day, yesterday, matter of fact, and he had, his whole, I don't know if it's his, his uh, office or a room in their home is full, is full of Indiana, red Indiana women's basketball t-shirts that I think he's ready to give out uh, before all those busloads of people come over and support us. So pretty cool. Um, I'm happy that we can do it. I know she's, she's super excited about, you know, going home and, and playing in front of her fans and friend and um, family uh, and her friends. And so she's been very grateful, um, you know, and gracious, um, and um, making sure that she, she, that I know how much she appreciates and so do her, and so does her family that we're bringing her home. We'll go Seth and then last question from Matthew. Yeah, I wanted to uh, follow up a little bit about Allie. You know, you talked about how much she loves the game and I know one of the things that was really hard for her was, you know, kind of making the decision to stop playing and, and make the transition over to coaching just you know, how did you kind of, you know, help her through that? How did you, you know, what do you, what was that like for your, for, for her, from your perspective? Yeah. I, you know, um, Seth, I'm not in, I don't want to speak for Allie. Um, Cause I really think it was kind of an easy decision for her. Uh, you know, she had the choice. Uh, she, she had a contract in front of her that was going to send her over, I think to Spain uh, where she could play professionally. Um, but this is when, um, 
you know, I knew that I was going to have another spot. We were going to create another spot on our staff. And um, she was the first person that come that came to mind, like, I, cause I knew she wanted to coach. I knew she, this is the profession that she wanted to, to be in. Um, and so, um, you know, it was, it was a short conversation. I mean, this is your options. You can go over, it's a win-win. You can go over and, and continue to try to play and uh, maybe come back and try to, you know, stick on a WNBA team. If you have, uh, you know, uh, a good experience over there and you're playing well enough and, or you can start your, your uh, coaching career right here at a place that you love. And, um, uh, you know, and I knew she could help us, uh, you know, she is obviously beloved in our, um, in this program, by not just Hoosier nation, but also by, you know, some of her teammates. And so uh, if anybody could have pulled it off in terms of the line that is drawn between being a student, you know, um, a student athlete and being a coach, it was Allie Patberg. Um, and um, she's so professional on so many levels, uh, but also she has the admiration and the, and the respect of all those kids uh, in that locker room downstairs. And so, um, you yeah, know, that, that goes a long way, you know, and you can, and, and it helps in recruiting when recruits speak, you can have Allie speak to what it's like to, you know, be a student athlete here um academically but also what it's like to be in in our program and how we we do things and so um as i mentioned she's she's been she's going to be a rock star but she's been very instrumental um in um you know what we've been able to do and some of the kids that we're we've been able to recruit matthew hey coach hope, you, hope you've been well uh you got some starters coming back there's some freshmen also into the mix i guess kind of from a coaching perspective what are you looking to see uh on wednesday um, well, I hope that we get to see a lot of different, um, combinations out on the floor together. You know, I think it'll be, as I mentioned, you know, that first game is always, um, exciting moment for not just your, not just your returners. I mean, they get excited and they get a little bit, uh, you know, uh, nervous might not be the right word for the, the Max and the Sid Parishes and the Chloe's, but, but they get excited. You know, there's a little bit of, um, you know, on the edge of your seat, uh, for them. And then, um, as I mentioned with Bo and Sharnice and um, Jules, I mean, it'll be the first time that they'll, they'll be bodies in the, in assembly hall, which they um, have, uh, you know, Bo came over and watched his play several times last year. Jules has never seen what it's like to, you know, have bodies inside the hall, neither is Sharnice. And so I just think it'll be a great moment for, for all of us to, to uh, get back on the floor and, um, you know, play an opponent uh, that's not uh, in, you know, that's not our practice guys. Um, our kids will look forward to it. There's, there's no question. What I'd like to see is, um, you know, always, and that's, um, you know, some of the things that we've been trying to do in practice on the offensive side, be executed. Um, and then us be, uh, you know, stingy defensively like we've been. Um, and um, we're still a work in progress, I think, on the defensive side of the ball, especially because of the, those new kids. Um, that's always the, the, the learning curve. That's always the hardest part is uh, being able to figure out uh, where you're supposed to be in our rotations, where your drops are. Um, and so Bo and Jules would be the first ones to tell you that that's been a, a major, um, uh, you know, learning uh, opportunity for them. Um, and, um, and so we'll see. Uh, but um, I, I think it'll be good for us to, to get on the floor, with the lights on, um, you know, bodies in the bodies in there. I think it'll be good for, for a lot of reasons. All right. Thanks coach. Yep. Thank you guys. Have a great day. We'll see you soon. All right, I see Allie on here. So Allie, if you're ready, you can turn on your camera. There she is. All right, go uh, ahead. Uh, do the same thing, raise your hand feature for questions for Allie Patberg. Lou, why don't you go ahead? Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay. Allie, um, when uh, you first got drafted by the WNBA, what were your first thoughts? And then quickly, uh, it seemed very suddenly and very quickly, they cut you. And I wondered if you felt you didn't get a good chance to show what you could do and how you reacted to that in the moment. Um, yeah, so um, obviously when I, you know, got drafted, I was just super, super excited. Um, 
I wouldn't say it was um a shock, but almost a shock, uh, just because uh, my entire playing career at IU, I was never focused on, um, you know, thinking or, you know, really locking in on, I want to be, you know, a WNBA player, I want to get drafted. Um, and so, you know, season ended really quick for us, uh, quicker than, than we had wanted. Um, and then, you know, it was right around the corner. Um, and I knew I had, you know, opportunities to play professionally. Um, and I love the game so much. Um, and so, um, you know, when when the draft was that night, I went over with Alexa, my teammate, and just kind of watching, um, honestly, not expecting really anything. Um, oh. And so when I got drafted and by Indiana, uh, it was just awesome. And it was more awesome for me, um, not for myself, but for our program, um, for all the times, you know, how hard we worked, me and Coach Box, you know, on the floor in terms of developing my game, um, Coach Moore and Coach Rhett you know, all the coaches that poured so much into my game to help our team win. Um, it was just awesome for me to, to right there in that moment, just thank them for all they had done for me. Um, and, you know, I, again, I, it was more, I was excited for our program and, and, you know, excited for the opportunity to go to training camp and see what that's like. And um, yeah, you know, I it wasn't there very long, um, but you know, it is what it is. And I'm so thankful for the experience. I'm thankful um, that, you know, the GM, Lynn Dunn, gave me an opportunity. Um, and, you know, it, again, it wasn't more so for me, but for everyone, you know, that are big Indiana fans and grew up knowing, you know, me as a high school player and to see that they could do that one day. Um, and I'm I'm just thankful I got that, that opportunity to see that and um, to be there. Alex, and then Skip. Allie, thank you for the time. We appreciate it. Yeah, of course. Thank you. It's it's not been long since you were a, a newcomer in college basketball, and, and there's some some fresh faces, some new players on this team. I'm curious, just from a player's perspective, somebody that's been through it, what are the biggest adjustments that a young player has coming into college basketball, and what are you trying to do with some of the, the younger guards maybe to try to help work them through? Obviously, it's, it's probably not the – easiest adjustment you're in a new place living in a new city and all that so I'm just curious how you're trying to help the young players and what the biggest adjustments are for those those girls yeah um I love being in this position um in this I have this opportunity to help you know Jules Lene um you know even you know all the all of our players um but especially the young ones and even more so the guards um just it's a lot. Um, it's a lot thrown at you really, really fast. Um, and I, I truly believe the biggest adjustment is just the pace that we play at. Um, it's another level. Um, and so, you know, being able to work with our guards on a daily basis and really push them in the summer and so that they're more prepared for the season when it comes, um, that's been, that's been awesome. And I, it's paying off. Um, and I think defensively it's, it's a huge adjustment, adjustment, um, we're a very smart team um, and we're disciplined defensively and we do a lot of things that they've never seen. Um, and so for me, I think, you know, you can do all you want on the court, but I think a, a big, you know, thing that we've done is we've watched a lot, a lot, a lot of film individually um, with our guards, with Lene, with Jules, um, just so that they see it on the floor and then they see it on film. Um, and I think the biggest thing for me, um, I try to really communicate to, to, the freshman that you have to give yourself grace. Um, you're going to make mistakes and you're going to make a lot of them, um, but just do your best not to make the same mistake over and over, you know, make the mistake and then we'll fix it. Um, and then when they do, you know, the right things, just really pouring into them, making sure they're hearing it. Um, Cause you know, we tend to get on them a lot because they don't know what they don't know. And, you know, they, it's, it's all new to them. Um, and so when they do a great job, we're their biggest cheerleader. Um, and just staying in there about being confident and believing in themselves and that they belong here. Skip and then Talia. Hey, Ellie, how are you? Good, how are you? Good. Alexandra told me to say hi, so. Um, <laughs> well, I said hello. I will. Um, have you spoken with Kiana recently? <laughs> and how does it feel that um, to know that you're both going through this assistant coach stage at the same time. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We talk a lot. Um, we had talked after both of our first scrimmages um, 
and just you know can it's the same thing you know you're you're new to what you're doing um and you're learning as you're growing um and so just continuing to stay in each other's ears about you know that to have confidence um to can you continue to work hard um we've thrown ideas off of each other in terms of drills and um no it's been it's been a blessing to have her going through the same thing I, that I'm going through um and she's you know always the first to to make a joke to laugh um, and sometimes you need that um and so yeah I mean our bond is super tight obviously you know and that won't ever change but this is only you know allowing us to to be even closer just going through another another challenge I wouldn't say challenge yes it is a challenge but just the newness of the role and what we're doing um it's been it's been awesome to have her Hell yeah. Hey, Allie, what's it been like continuing to have this front seat to seeing women's basketball nationally and here at IU just reach new levels and new heights? Yeah, um, it's really, really awesome. You know, I, I'm two years about to be in my second year and not obviously playing on the court and just seeing in the past year how much growth the game has had has been really, really cool. Um, and just all of the... Um, you know, investments being made by other people outside of the sport, you know, whether it's, you know, a social media, they're, you know, putting us out there more. Um, it's just been really cool to see people taking steps to help grow the game. Um, and, and it's just cool to, um, you know, I believe that the game has been this great, um, but now again, we're just able, people are having more access to it. Um, they're able to see it more. Um, and again, I think, you know, the game is getting better. You know, everyone's getting better. Um, we're growing. I feel like they're, you know, obviously the more people love the game, there's going to be more coaches, um, which pushes people to be better coaches. And so it's only going to continue to grow. And I'm, I'm just excited that I'm a small, small, small part of it. Matthew, go ahead. Hi, Ali. Uh, thanks for the time. Uh, you've been a coach on the, st on the staff for uh, quite some time, a little bit of time. And then uh, Amber Smith joined the staff. Uh, what's it kind of been like uh, to kind of have this coaching journey uh, aside her? Um, kind of saw recently that video where she was really high energy uh, in practice. Yeah, yeah um, Amber's awesome. Um, it's been a blessing to have her on, on staff just because, like you said, she brings a lot of energy. She brings a lot of joy. Um, and, you know, again, we're both – She's new to the program. I've been here for a while, uh, but new to the obviously role that I'm in um, and just to kind of be there for one another and to, you know, show her certain things that, you know, I'm, I know because I've been here for seven, eight years. And so I know the ins and outs of our programs, but not necessarily, you know, from a, a coaching being on the floor standpoint that she has obviously a lot more experience than me. Um, and so we've been able to help each other and, um, you know, in those both ways. Uh, but she's been, she's been awesome and she's going to only help us and only has been helping us be better every day. Now we have one last question from Lou. Lou, you can go ahead. Uh, Allie, it sounds like from what coach was saying, and um, I didn't know this before you had the opportunity to continue playing in Spain uh, right after the fever experience. And what made you make the choice to stay home and start coaching at a young age when you clearly could play for several more years and then start coaching? <laughs> Honestly, um, you know, I, again, I didn't, I, my experience in the WA ended a lot shorter than I wanted to. Um, and then I knew if I ever wanted to play in the WNBA, I was going to have to play overseas and do well. Um, and, part of me, not part of me, all of me. <laughs> I didn't want to have to be away from my family, my friends for eight months out of the year uh, to play, um, to play, you know, not knowing, you know, if I'd even get a chance. Um, and again, part of me was like, well, I want to try just to know that I did it. But then it was like, but life's too short. Uh, you know, I don't, want to spend the majority of my life away from everybody I love um and you know I knew I was going to love coaching because I love the game so much but I love pouring into other pouring into people even more um and so 
you know, again, it it was it was a hard decision in the moment, but it wasn't at the same time just because I knew I was going to be around the people I I really love and the school I love and doing what I know is going to be what I knew was going to be a dream job for me. Thank you. You're welcome. Do you have anything else for Allie, Lou? I'm good. Thank you. Okay. All right, Allie. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Bye.